Hey friends. Like many developers, you probably learned SQL or SQL before you learned MongoDB. And no worries, I'm the same way. But if you're coming to MongoDB from an SQL background, you're probably wanting some help translating the terms you know in SQL and converting them over to MongoDB. There's a lot of similarities and a lot of differences, and I think it's helpful to like look at them from the SQL lens. One of the biggest problems I see with developers coming to MongoDB from a SQL background is that they want to do things the same way they did with a SQL background. And if you're doing that, that's okay, but it's important to learn how to fully utilize a document-based database if you're coming from a SQL background. Can you imagine if we always did things the first way we learned them and never adapted or grew? I remember early in my career, I was working with some other developers and I walked up to them and they had a million files on their desktop and they were all versioned by dates and I asked them why they weren't using Git and the answer they gave was, that's the way we've always done it. <clears throat> that's so frustrating, right? Sometimes it's better to learn new ways to do things instead of just always doing what you used to do. And that's a little bit what coming to MongoDB from an SQL background and not learning the new ways to do things is like. Now, if you find this video helpful, make sure you drop a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. First of all, what is MongoDB? MongoDB is a document-based database system that allows flexible schema design to build modern applications. MongoDB saves data in documents. And no, I don't mean those documents. And no, I don't mean those documents either. I think if you told somebody MongoDB sort things in documents, they might think a Word document. That's not true. MongoDB saves data in JSON-like documents. It's actually BSON. In fact, let's take a look at a sample document. With JSON, you're saving things in a string format and you can't differentiate between different types of things. It's up to the whatever system's parsing in that JSON to determine that. With MongoDB BSON, you can save things in much more interesting ways. For example, if you look at this document, you can see that we're saving data in strings, integers, floats. You can have arrays, arrays of objects, nested objects, GeoJSON data, and so much more. Okay, now let's take a look at how we might save the same data in a SQL database. Now in a SQL database, you can see we save things in tables. These tables are Basically, think of them as fancy Excel spreadsheets, right? We have rows and columns of data that we're saving. And we're saving data in a SQL database. You need to split them up or normalize them and you, by splitting that data into separate collections and you join them based on unique foreign keys so we can write queries to pull them up. MongoDB, we can just save all the data in one place. But if you wanna learn more about MongoDB schema design, make sure you check out my video on MongoDB schema design best practices. Link in the, the description below. All right. Now we're gonna look at mapping terms and concepts from SQL and converting them over to MongoDB. Let's start someplace easy. In MongoDB and in SQL, we call both of the things that we save data in databases. What is saved in those databases is different. In an SQL database, we save things in tables. A single database can, can contain many subtables. Likewise, in MongoDB, a single database can have multiple collections. Collections in SQL databases are made up of many rows of data. These rows are where we save actual, the contents of the database. Similarly, in MongoDB, you're saving things in documents. One row of data is the equivalent of a single document in MongoDB. Similarly, the vertical columns on a SQL table is equivalent to a field on a MongoDB document. Okay, it's time for a dad joke. I think you're ready for it now that, now that we got some basic vocab down. So, a SQL DBA walks into a bar, but leaves immediately because there's no tables. <laughs> I'm gonna pause for laughter here because I'm sure you're dying. Also, did you know that indexes still behave the same regardless of whether they're working with a SQL database or a MongoDB database. Indexes on both databases work by using a B tree. It allows us to read and find data really quickly within them. Think of them as a table of contents for data. So you don't have to look through every page. You can just look to the table of contents and go directly to the page of where the data is that you're looking for. In a SQL database, in order to pull together data from separate collections, we do something called a join. We saw this in the example earlier where to pull together the professions and cars table, 
into a single query, you have to perform a join on that data. Joins are really expensive and time consuming and resource intensive for the computers running those databases. MongoDB, we also have a join, but it's a little bit more efficient. In MongoDB, instead of separating that data out into separate collections, which you're probably used to with SQL, what you can just do is to embed it. If you've been in the SQL world for any length of time, you've probably heard of ACID. And no, I'm not talking about the psychedelic ACID. I'm talking about the acronym. ACID stands for Atomic, Consistent, Isolated, and Durable. Basically, it just means if you save data within your database, it will be there the next time you go and query for it. This is not very commonly known, but MongoDB also supports ACID transactions. By default, single document transactions on a database are ACID compliant. But if you wanna do a delete, update, couple inserts, a couple deletes, and you wanna make that all a single ACID transaction, you can do that with MongoDB. In SQL, there's multiple types of joins you can perform, including a left outer join. This allows you to pull together data, for example, using those form keys. Uh, MongoDB also supports doing this. So if you have data in separate collections and you want to pull that data together in a single query, you can do that using the dollar lookup aggregation pipeline. Any join you're doing, it slows down the performance of your application and you're better off embedding and duplicating the data with MongoDB if you have that possibility. All right, one more term we wanna go over here. Schemas. Now by default in an SQL or SQL database, Schemas are fixed. If you wanna add or remove any, any columns from your database, you wanna make sure that you are doing a migration to make sure that data is consistent. Now, it's commonly misunderstood in MongoDB that MongoDB is a schemaless database. This is in fact not true. MongoDB is a flexible schema database. That means as a developer, you get to decide which fields you want to enforce their data types, different options at a database level. You do not need an ORM to enforce a schema for your application. But the more you know, we covered a lot of different terms and concepts that map from SQL to MongoDB here today. And that is not the beginning or the end of it, right? We're barely scratching the surface of all of the terms and concepts that translate. But I want this to be just your first look into how these are so similar and where they are different. If you're working on a project and maybe this is your first MongoDB project and you need any help, best place to get your answer solved is on the MongoDB community forums. That's at community.mongodb.com. You should go and check that out. And if you found this video helpful at all, be sure to hit like, subscribe, and add a comment below and let me know what you want me to cover next time. If you want to hang out with me ever again in the future, best place to do that is on Twitter at Joe Carlson and the number one. Thanks for stopping by, y'all. See you next time. ACID stands for Atomic Isolate. Oh boy, it's, it's hard to remember. Atomic stands for so a SQL at so a SQL DBA walks into a bar and asks the bartender if there's any places to sit.